we will be looking at have project scope management and uh, the first step is to have the plan the scope and for planning the scope what we did as far was the inputs are project management plan the charter the EEF and OPS and the tools and techniques are expert judgment and meetings and the output is this scope management plan and the requirements management plan we saw some PMI uh, resources uh, in terms of the templates for scope management and requirements management. The next step is to collect the requirements. So scope management plan, requirements management plan, stakeholder management plan, project charter and stakeholder register are your inputs. When we need to collect the requirements, we need to clearly understand from whom it needs to be collected and hence the need for stakeholder management plan and stakeholder register. The tools and techniques specified here were interviews, focus groups, facilitated workshops, group creativity techniques, group decision making techniques, questionnaires and surveys, observations, prototypes, benchmarking, context diagram, document analysis. We said that questionnaires and surveys are used when you have to get information from a large number of people. I also explained the term benchmarking, what it means and outputs we have is requirement document and the requirements traceability matrix. Within group creativity technique we saw brainstorming, nominal group, Delphi, idea of mind mapping affinity diagram. So nominal group was basically brainstorming plus then after that to put a score to each of those or weightage and then prioritize. Group decision making techniques unanimity, majority, plurality and dictatorship. Plurality we explained as that it is the largest group present in that decision making process if whatever they agree that, are, that is being taken up. We saw the example of this mind map. We saw context diagram where in, mid, in the middle we have the process and left hand side we have all the inputs and right hand side all the outputs. Affinity diagram is where the post its are used and all the points are being requirements are being mentioned there and then they are grouped under certain headings for better understanding and for better discussion, more structured discussion. We saw requirements management plan, requirements traceability matrix. The requirements traceability matrix gives a single document to ensure that all the points that has been agreed or approved as requirements are being considered and taken care of across the life cycle of the project. Then we saw define scope. In define scope, <coughs> we have scope management plan, project charter, requirements document and OPS, expert judgment, product analysis, alternative generation and facilitated workshops are the tools and techniques, project scope statement and project document updates are the outputs. And here what we saw is that there is a project scope and there is a product scope which needs to be addressed by a project manager. So the product scope are the features or the functionality that characterize the product, service or result. Completion is measured against the requirements whereas project scope is the work that must be performed to deliver a product. That is how you execute the project. 
So on the product scope, we have the functional requirement, non-functional requirement like speed, ease of use, etc., user interface, implicit requirements. Project scope is more to do with how to execute the project, like the project budget, meetings, status report, user training, defect management, project artifacts, project schedule. We understood the term product analysis, analyzing the product that project will create and can be accomplished through product breakdown, WBS, uh, value, value chain analysis, etc. And alternative generation, exploring possibilities of generating different approach to execute and perform the project. We saw the contents of the project scope statement. We saw the difference between the project charter and the project scope. So where project charter talks about the pro purpose of the project, the objectives of the project, high level requirements, high level project description, level, high level risks, summary milestones, summary budget stakeholder list, project approval requirements assigned by the project, assigned project manager responsibility and authority, name and authority of the sponsor. On the other hand, project scope statement defines the project scope description, acceptance criteria, deliverables, exclusions, constraints and assumptions. The next step is to create the WBS, the work breakdown structure. The work breakdown structure actually pr provides the details of the complete project requirement and it is broken down or decomposed to the lowest level which is a work package. What is the inputs? Scope management, project scope, requirements document, EAF and OPS. The tools and techniques is decomposition and expert judgment. This breaking down into the lower levels is called decomposition. The output is the scope baseline and the project document update. So work package is the lowest level. There is some, we understood some of the terms like code of accounts, which is a number one system used to identify unique components of WBS. Control accounts, which are management control points, where scope, budget, actual cost and schedule are integrated compared to <coughs> and value for performance measurement planning package. The WBS component below the control account with known work content but without detailed schedule activities. Rolling wave planning, we explained rolling wave planning which is in the form of progressive elaboration. So the, in this case the planning takes place for the immediate activities in much more details than the one. So as we grow, go into the project and start understanding more about the project, about, about what to be done we start planning the details of the activities gradually. Work breakdown, work packages are used as one of the methods for the decomposition. So here you have work packages like components analysis, requirements charges, identification alternative analysis. So you come down to that lowest level, starting from need assessment, standards development. So this is basically based on the work packages, that what is the work to be done. So project management will have its own work packages. System engineering will have its own work packages. Standards development will have its own work packages and need assessment their own. The other one is by phase. We are more used to by phases like project management, requirements, design, construction, integration and test or it can be on the basis of major deliverables. This is also something which we use for our WBS purpose. So there are three types of or three ways of decomposing a 
WBS. Every WBS has to be accompanied by a WBS dictionary. The dictionary gives the textual details of explanations of each of the elements in the WBS pack, uh, in the WBS. This will help anybody to look at it and will be able to understand what is the meaning and what is there in it. Okay. The next process is verifying scope. To formalize acceptance of the completed project variables, you have to verify scope. The customer does the verification. So inputs project management plan, requirements document, requirements traceability metrics, validated deliverables and work performance data. Tools and techniques are inspection and group decision making techniques. Outputs, accepted deliverables, change request, work performance information and project document updates. The next stage is control scope. Here to monitor the status of the project and product scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. So project management plan, requirements document, requirements traceability metrics, work performance data, OPS are your inputs. Variance analysis is the tool and technique. And output is your work performance information, change request, project management plan update, project document update and OPS updates.